On a college campus, professors are ubiquitous. You see them every day, rarely giving a second thought to who they are beyond what they teach you. But occasionally, a professor will come along that makes you wonder, how did they get here? Why did they decide to teach? These professors often keep their students engaged and work to ensure their success as a professional. This is one of those stories, the story of Dr. Mark von Schlemmer. Well, I'm currently a professor of communication and film, is officially what my title is here at UCM. Um, and I've taught here, this is my 12th year here, I believe, something like that. Um, and I, uh, am, I consider myself a film professor and a filmmaker. Born in Kansas to a military family, Doc Vaughn's family was large and always on the move. Uh, I come from a military family. My father was a colonel in the army, and so we traveled around a lot. I lived in a bunch of different places, California to Virginia to, we kept coming back to Kansas. Well, my dad was, was a military man and eventually reached the rank of colonel and then he retired a few years later. So he retired when I was in junior high. So that's when we moved off of Fort Leavenworth to the downtown Leavenworth. Um, and uh, I have three siblings. Um, older, I'm, I'm the youngest of four. So I'm the, I'm the yes, the baby of the family. Uh, uh, oldest sister and then I had two brothers. I live in just outside of Lawrence, Kansas, so I commute in. I'm a Kansan by birth. Of all the films that he saw, there was a particular film which had a significant impact on him. There are certain films that kind of stick in my mind, and um, one of them that I was just thinking about um, that I remember years later thinking what effect it had on me was the movie Sounder, which I don't think was actually a Disney film. It certainly wasn't of that um, kind, but. But it was, uh, it was one of the first films that kind of brought race to my attention. And really, I was kind of interested in those sorts of issues, even as a kid. I was trying to figure out, you know, we'd get some education about slavery and things like that in the United States, and always kind of confused me how that could be and how, how would that work in this country. And Seeing the American experience for people of color in media would have a lasting impact on Doc Vaughn's life. I, another story that's related to African-American storytelling is uh, the, the show Julia, which no one talks about much now. And it was just, you know, as a kind of a lighter comedy, but it also brought up some interesting issues. And that was just something we watched around, uh, you know, in our house. And I just remember those kind of stories really caught my attention. And it really was a gap before years later I started getting into studying film and things like that and started looking at African-American issues in film. And so that's part of what I think you know is in my background of what I remember being intrigued by. Um, the series Roots was on television in the late 70s and that was uh, kind of really opened my eyes and a lot of people it was pretty groundbreaking uh, television but again it, it gave us insight into parts of our history that we don't always talk about a lot in this country. Doc Vaughn's love of media and literature brought him to the University of Kansas as an English major where his life would take a decidedly different turn. I got all my degrees from the University of Kansas. So when I was at KU, um, I didn't know what to major in. And I uh, ended up in English because I liked reading and I liked writing. And uh, I had a friend who was majoring in film and I thought, oh, you can major in film? Well, that sounds fun, eh, but I'm already going this direction. So, But then I stayed in school and got a master's degree and that's when I was able to start getting into it. So I credit my friend, Bruce, with some for, for alerting me the idea that you'd get a degree in this. What, how interesting is that? After college, Doc Vaughn jumped headfirst into the television industry, taking a job with KCTV5, the Kansas City CBS affiliate. When I left the cable station a few years later and got a job at the broadcast television station, CBS uh, television station in Kansas City, KCTV5, um, the guy that hired me there was also, I consider, one of my mentors and really, really lucky to run into a boss like that who would hire people. I had already done some fairly advanced directing and sorts of things, but he hired me at the bigger station. I had to go back and do more simple tasks, but he liked hiring people that he knew could do more than just that. One of Doc Vaughn's most impactful relationships came as a result from his work in television. So one of the, one of the fun projects I've gotten to work on years ago, I created an arts show at the cable station. Um, but I wanted to, I had started to meet some of the artists and musicians around Lawrence, Kansas. And I thought it would be great to do a show where I can showcase their work. It was kind of this artsy you know, thing they didn't totally understand. But um, so I got to meet a lot of the artists and musicians around uh, and, and filmmakers around Lawrence. And that was when I first made contact with Kevin. And he had, uh, I guess it was his 
NYU Masters Film Project, and uh, and it was a little too long for our show, and so I, I, you know, I chatted with him and said, "Is it okay if I cut it down a little bit?" It, it's, you know, I, I was like, it was really kind of um, uh, brave of me to tell a filmmaker, "Your film's a little long. Can I edit it a little bit?" <laughs> and he was like, "Oh yeah, sure. Do whatever you need." It's like, okay. And so so we played it, put it on the air. It was kind of fun. This friendship was pivotal to Doc Vaughn's future inspiring him to return to the University of Kansas to get his PhD, which led to future collaborations. And, uh, and so then when I came back to get my PhD at KU, I got to work directly with him. I took classes with him. Um, he was on my uh, dissertation committee. And I had access, I used to work, do freelance work at Sprint in Kansas City. And they had a nice edit bay, edit um, facility. And because I already had access to that, a key and things like that, to that, when someone else there was being generous to Kevin, we made the connection of, oh, I have a key, I work there, I know that machine, that, that equipment. And I said, Kevin, if I can help out, let me know. And so basically I got the position was the post-production supervisor and assistant editor. So I, I hadn't done a lot on that project, but I helped him with it at various times. And uh, so that was our first connection. And then we just click, clicked from the beginning. And uh, part of it is this real mutual respect of, valuing each other's opinions and really putting the work first. I just really, uh, you know, believe in the kind of work he's working on. Of all Doc Vaughn's accomplishments, the Show Me Justice Film Festival is arguably his proudest achievement at UCM. Uh, as an instructor here, uh, the Dean Gershom Nelson decided we should take on this film festival that was being abandoned by a group that had started it. It's called the Show Me Justice Film Festival. And the concept of the Show Me Justice Film Festival was films about social justice, something I was very passionate about. So I really dove into that, and that's part of how I got the full-time uh, you know, tenure-track position. Um, but I still think that concept, and we brought filmmakers from all over the world, from South Africa, from France, from Canada, from all over the United States, to, that would come here uh, throughout the, the 10 years of its existence. And so... I really think that was a great project. I'd like to think that's part of my legacy here is that the, the, the Show Me Justice Film Festival. These experiences and others from the past led Doc Vaughn to take on his largest project ever, teaching. His desire to share his knowledge and passion for film brought Doc Vaughn to his current position as a professor at the University of Central Missouri. I, I, I took, a, took a few years, I'll, I'll say eight years, to get my PhD. Um, right when I was finishing, finally finishing my dissertation, uh, one of my fellow grad students had a, was working at UCM and said, hey, we, have, we, need, hey, we need someone to uh, teach a couple courses. And so I did that two weeks after I turned in my dissertation. I got handed a couple courses here and said, well, I live in Lawrence, but it's a 90-mile drive, 90 minutes. Okay, I can do that a few days a week and uh, started teaching. And then it just, you know, it got into me. <laughs> <laughs> um, they opened up a, a, a tenure track position at the end of that year and uh, uh, I applied for it and they had already seen me teaching and saw what I could bring to the to the school and so got hired for the tenure track position. As a consummate professional, Doc Vaughn's teaching style merges both theory and hands-on experience to train the next generation of filmmakers. However, it is his honesty and directness about the industry that find him at his most sincere. Uh, you really need to decide what your passion is. Um, there's lots of higher paying jobs out there probably. Until you get to the really high end in Hollywood, you're not making a ton of money. But if you love what you're doing, that's not that important. But you've got to find what your passion is. And uh, um, so I think going to school is a really good idea. I think that's a chance to really explore to find out what your what your niche or what your interest is in in film, there's lots of different jobs in the industry, and so um, I think the main thing is to try a little bit of everything and explore. And that's part of what our degree, not that big a program, but I think that's part of the value of that sort of program is you got you have to do a little bit. You have to take an editing class, and you have to take cinematography class, and some some graphics work and multimedia production and things like that. And you got to kind of decide what what moves you. Um, and so that's what I think going to school helps with. But a lot of what you learn in school is like the discipline of, you know, people get tired, people get tired of hearing about the deadlines and things like that, but you gotta learn what those are because in the world, in the business world, in the, in the film industry, there, there's all kinds of deadlines. So part of what you learn, you also learn problem solving. Here's the story I wanna tell, I, here's how much money I have, or here's the equipment I have, how can I get there? 
And so you got to figure it out. you got to be creative and approach that. Beyond his work with Kevin Wilmont, Doc Vaughn developed a filmmaking style of his own. While an editor at heart, Doc Vaughn's training and experience provided a comprehensive understanding of the filmmaking process. Well, to me, filmmaking is a learning process at every step of the way. And a lot of the basics, basics come down to the basics of filming and recording audio and um, editing. Um, but an awful lot of it comes back to working with people and treating people with respect. And so, I mean, I try to emphasize that. I don't know, my students could tell you better whether I am accomplishing that or not. But to me, that's the joy of making films is that you get to work with different people and uh, learn new things. And you, they respond well if you respond well to them. And so that's a kind of universal. And even in the edit bay, where often you're kind of by yourself in the edit bay, or maybe you're with the director sitting next to you or something like that, it's still this matter of treating people with respect. And the process itself is a lot of fun. I mean, that's part of why I've ended up doing editing. What I learned early on uh, when I was working at the TV station, I liked the process. So I was doing a 30 second promo on live power Doppler, the most powerful television radar in Kansas City. Okay, how can I make this interesting? How can I make a 30 second promo that's gonna catch the attention of people or whatever? Um, you kinda gotta dive into it and tell that story. Doc Vaughn's influence and desire to make his students successful extends beyond the classroom into encouraging those who have left and became successful to return and help provide opportunities for the next generation of filmmakers. Hopefully bringing knowledge to them and, and them going out and becoming uh, uh, digital media professionals. So I hope that's, that's really the most important legacy in some ways for students just to, to have learned something and figured out more. I hope that we can get more students to come back that have graduate and come back and I think we're gonna come up with ways of doing that. We did that some in the computer lab. Some of the some of the people involved with that were alumni coming back to help with it. So I think that's an important kind of uh, uh, pay pay it forward kind of concepts. <laughs>